Good evening, friends of the inner sanctum. This is your host to welcome you through the squeaking door. Uh, our uh, cast assembled here in a highly unique manner tonight. The ingenue flew in the window. Did anyone whisper, which window? <laughs> Another nimble member of the cast crawled out of the studio woodwork. This creep said that he simply loved popping up where at least suspected. <laughs> oh, unforgettable characters. Meet them once, they'll haunt you right to your grave. <laughs> but seriously, every last one of them is really and truly wrapped up in his work. Like a uh, shall we say, a scorpion? Hmm. <laughs> Tonight's Inner Sanctum Mystery, Hangman's Island, was written by John Robert and stars Mason Adams in the role of Regan with Elspeth Eric as Wilma. We're on an island somewhere off the Florida Keys. Hangman's Island. A bleak ruin of marsh, rubble, and scotch pine trees. It is sometime between night and morning. Cowering in the marsh, crawling on all fours like a giant ant, is a man. Ragged, smeared with his own blood, as his life slowly ebbs away. He crawls like a hunted animal with the taunting voice of the hunter exploding in his brain. Regan! Are you dead yet? Regan! <laughs> no use, Regan. I can hear you move. A bell rings every time you move. I know exactly where you are. And I watch you, Regan. An eye as big as this island. Ingrid! Ingrid! Show yourself, I dare you! Meet me face to face! Just one! Give me an even chance! <laughs> In the morning, I'll come for you. Just one more hour, Regan, and it will be morning. One more hour. Up there in the sky, I can see a gold ball. The sun burning up the night. <laughs> a gold ball in the sky. All the gold I'm going to get. It all began the day I got the feeling that Fats was about to dust me off. Part company. Fats had that little greedy gleam in his eye that spelled a secret bankroll. I could tell he didn't want me around to help him count it. Fats, yeah? I could use five. <laughs> Who couldn't get? Hey, you're not hinting you think I've got five. You've got that well-fed look the last couple of days. Uh, lobster dinner look. Uh, you're talking from hunger, kid. I've been bumming coffee and just like you. Uh, hand me that necktie, huh? Stepping off? Yeah. Uh, Regan... Why? I've, uh, I've been thinking. We haven't done so good, uh, teamed up. Our luck's been all bad. So? So, uh, we ought to face up to it. And part company, huh? Yeah. I was thinking that, uh, starting in the morning, one of us ought to shove off. Go it alone. Sure. Uh, no hard feelings. Sure. No hard feeling. Fats had some swindle cookie, and he wanted a hog. 
I followed right behind him to a shack on the wharf that furnished cheap piano music and heaping plate of fish and chips. I was right behind a paper-thin partition, watching Fats and a blonde doll sitting over a lobster dinner. The doll had hair as golden as anything in the mint. She was the last dame in the world you'd expect to make a pitch for roly-poly Fatso Crocker. I I didn't catch your name the other day, Goldilocks. Wilma. Your mind made up? A half. Uh, What's the other half of you holding out for? Uh, more on the line. How much more? The same slice in advance. You're expensive for a down-at-the-heel panhandler. You'll find another slice in this envelope. Uh, how about the rest of the, uh, instructions? You'll find them written on this. Uh, how long have I got? Two days. When you're finished, we'll meet again. Fats was cooking a fancy dish, all right. Early that night in the wormy room we shared, I waited till Fats was asleep. I had to find things out fast before daylight brushed me out of his life. I went through his pockets. Fats had a bankroll, all right. More dough than he'd ever seen outside of his dreams. Ten thousand dollars in yellow black gold notes, the kind the treasury had called in back in the thirties. And all soiled and damp like they'd been buried somewhere. In another pocket, I found the note the girl had slipped. It was a map of an island. Drawn by hand like a treasure map with arrows leading in from a beach and pointing to what looked like a cave somewhere in the middle of the island. The map read Hinkley's Island. A treasure map right out of a kid's storybook. There was a big star over the last arrow where the cave showed. A star that yelled pot of gold at me so loud my pulse jumping made enough noise to wake and fetch out of dreamland. Huh? Uh-huh. Regan. Uh-huh. What are you snooping around my clothes for? Uh, Regan, uh, what's the gun for? You double-crossing roller blubber. So you were thinking one of us ought to shove off in the morning. I was joking, kid. Uh, one of us will shove off. Just one of us. Oh, kid, uh, don't be a fool. You don't know what it's about. Uh, I can read maps, too. And I can count off gold back. Uh, Regan, it's not your kind of a pitch. This isn't petty larceny. Something small time. What's the pillow for? What are you going to do? Yes. R- Regan, don't. We'll go together. I'll split the roll with you. Now go, Fats. I couldn't trust you alive anymore. <laughs> so long, Fats. <laughs> See you in the next world. <laughs> I could feel the warmth blow out of him like escaping steam. And then he grew cold. I dragged him out the back door, then rode across Crocodile Creek into the Everglades. I dumped him. I didn't have to weight him down or worry that he might float to the mainland and be discovered. Not a chance. Not in Crocodile Creek. I read the map again. Hinkley's Island, four miles out in the ocean. Made my way to a boat landing. I wanted to go after the money at once. It had to be hidden treasure. What else? I wasn't beating my brains out, figuring what were the exact terms of Crocker's deal with the blonde. Or what else lay behind it. I was too hopped up. At the boat landing, the ocean was acting up. The sign read, Peterson's boats were hired, day or week. I knocked for Peterson. Yes? Want to rent a motorboat. Tonight? Tonight. And a rough out, son. My skin. I'll cover the liability. Where are you figuring on it? Hinkley's on it. Hangman's Island. I said Hinkley's Island. What made you say Hangman's Island? Because that's its name as we know it. What would a young fellow like yourself be wanting with Hinkley? Why, is he poisoned? He got the brand of the devil, Hinkley. 
Now you've got me interested. Exactly who is Hinkley? Hinkley used to be a public executioner, a hangman, somewhere in the islands. Five thousand in gold every time Hinkley threw the trap and sent a man swinging to eternity. How'd he come to settle on the island? He bought it and retired to it 20 years ago. Brought a young bride from the islands to settle there with him. Nobody's seen hide or hair of the bride ever since that first day, 20 years ago. Has, has anybody around here ever seen Hangman's Island? Not the easiest. It's worth your life to try. Hinkley's got barbed wire all around it. Electric voltage that'd burn you to a crisp if you touched it. A crackpot hermit, huh? You... You can have your money back. Land's drier and safer. I said I wanted to rent a boat. I picked a motorboat off Peterson's wharf and headed for Hangman's Island. The seas were calmer and the lightning had quit as if someone had pulled a master switch. A midnight moon was peeping through. I covered the four miles to the island straight as an arrow and ran the motorboat up on a sandbar that opened into a short, rocky beach. I had company on the sandbar. Another boat. I got the map out to figure my course when a sound like the death cry of an animal broke the air. It was a human cry, a man. I looked following the direction of the scream. And then... In the distance, outlined high against the sky, a man was hanging from a tree with a crossbar that looked like a gallows. He was hanging by one foot, face down. I started forward toward him before I could stop the thing. Sporting idea, what? friend. You're having a chance in the world of reaching him. Who, who are you? Burnside. Lieutenant Burnside of the Coast Guard. Without a uniform? It's still Lieutenant Burnside of the Coast Guard. What do you mean I haven't got a chance of reaching him? The island is a big booby trap. You've got to get through electrified barbed wire to get anywhere. You get through the barbed wire and you've still got to get by delayed action bombs that'll blow you to smithereens. And quicksands cleverly covered over and camouflage. And uh, lime pits that would eat you alive if you dropped into one. McAvoy there walked into one of the simpler devices. Steel-jawed animal trap that swung him into midair, hanging by one heel. Who is McAvoy? He's my sidekick. I mean, was. You get stranded on that sandbar? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, uh, I lost my bearings and ran up on it. Well, that map you were reading a minute ago, let's, uh, let's see it. Maybe I can set you back on your course. How do you know it was a map? I guess. Oh, you're shaking your head. I'm doing more than shaking my head. I see. You mean to shoot that gun? If I don't get some straight talk and fast. Okay, straight talk. That map you're carrying, uh, what if I told you the map is the biggest booby trap of all? I'd laugh out loud. The girl palmed off a similar map on a couple of characters a month ago in Key West. They rented a boat and schooled for Hangman's Island and, uh... And what? Huh? That's all. They never came back. You'll probably run into them in one of the lime pits. Or under the quicksand, Tucker. Don't believe me, huh? Still shaking your head. I've got gold backs, mister. A pocket full of them that says you're just trying to scare me off. The gold backs are the bait. The girl snitched them from Hinkley's savings. Why would she bother just to give them away? Some insanity of hers. Let's just say that the golden-haired siren baits men to their murder for reasons of her own. You, um... Still pushing ahead? I still want to know who you really are, Mr. Burnside. You're still Lieutenant Burnside of the Coast Guard. We've been watching the girl. We came here to arrest Hinkley for the murder of those two men who never returned a month ago. I'll let Hinkley identify me for Stay you. Stay where you are. No tricks, Burnside, or I'll shoot. Adjust this rock. I'll hit one of those wires and start the bell ringing. 
Ellison. Burnside. Lieutenant Burnside. This is Hinkley. Your man hangs by a heel, head down, strangled by his own blood rushing to his head. <laughs> to your neck, Burnside. Believe me now? Sure. It's crazy. I believe it. Then give it up and don't hamper me. I've got enough to do. Have tangling with Hinkley. Put your gun down. No. I'm in it for the whole ride. How far can you get? Right to the star on that map. Okay, Burnside. Turn around. You'll regret it. I might regret giving you a break. Better turn around. <laughs> Burnside fell like a slaughtered ox. Somehow I didn't have the heart to drill him. It was one murder I wasn't up to. He'd be out cold, stay put, until I worked my way to the cave on the map. Luck. Lady Luck couldn't give me the horse laugh. Not after what I'd done chasing her, she couldn't. She stayed with me as if I was somebody special. I'd pass an arrowed marker on the map an inch closer to the cave. And the landmine would blow a shower of sand and rock into the air. Just 20 yards away, maybe 30, but I stayed alive and unhurt. My clothes brushed live wires and started bells ringing in a jangling chorus. But I pushed on like a foot soldier crossing no man's land. Inch, inch, yard. Seemed hours. But I made it. I made it on my hands and knees. I made the cave. Only it wasn't a cave, really. It had a heavy door with polished brass fittings tooled into an opening. An eerie yellow light shone from a square little window. It looked like a... like a mausoleum where the dead were put to rest. I went in with my gun drawn. It was a mausoleum, casket and all. Sitting solemnly in mourning clothes like a high priestess of the black arts. With the golden girl, Wilma... <laughs> You. Where is he? The fat one. I'm Regan, substituting for him. Any objection? Not if you have the steel at me. I have the steel. I'm here in the cave with all the booby traps. I'm right here. Yes, you have the steel for the job. Job? What do you mean, job? You don't know. Not exactly. I... Guess that Hinkley has a fortune hidden, a gold hoard, maybe, and you're betting he loses it to whoever has the steel to take it from him. You made that kind of a deal with Clark. <laughs> What's the joke? Your guess is so funny. Oh, there's no gold hoard. Come again? I said there's no gold, no fortune. All you'll get is what I pay you. Look, sister, don't play cat and mouse with me. I killed a man. I crawled here on my hands and my knees. I'm covered with blood and sweat. I followed that map. I died with every arrow. Now I'm here at the end of the rainbow. Don't kiss. I can't help what you imagine. I imagined a pot of gold. I looked at that map, imagined a pot of gold, and my brain radioed back. Sure, Regan, go to it, boy. Where is it? Where's the gold? You're hurting me. Try lying or you'll lose an arm. Where does the loony hermit keep the gold? Let me go, you... Casket. The gold's right here in this cave, just like the star on the map shows and hidden in that casket, is it? Why not see for yourself? Sure. Sure, I'll see for myself. What do you see? You. You're in there. Lying with your arms folded on your chest. Dead. Is it me? Sure. The exact image, face, figure, size, beautiful. And the hair, Regan. Golden, like yours, as golden as anything in the mint. There's your gold, Regan, just that, no more. What kind of crazy... Who is she? She was my mother. Your mother? She, she's not a 
stay all in you. Just carefully preserved. She died at exactly my age now. Whose idea was it preserving her like that? Hatley's. She's his pagan goddess. He pretends she's alive, ageless, but she never really died. And you... You're Hinckley's daughter? Yes. And you... You hate him? Yes, I hate him. Coast Guardsman on the beach said you were a siren luring men to their death here. He's wrong. I lure men here to kill Hinckley. Kill Hinckley? Yes. You'll have to kill Hinckley now. He knows you're here. He's overheard our whole talk. This cave is wired and Hinckley listens. So if you want to live, if you want to escape Hangman's Island alive, you'll have to kill Hinckley. Where are you going? Wilma, come back. You can't go. Wilma, come back. She was gone. Right under my nose, she disappeared as if she'd floated through the walls. I'd have to kill her, Hinkley, she said. I didn't have any choice. If I wanted to escape, I'd have to kill Hinkley. Regan, I know exactly where you are. You dared open the casket. For that, you will die. I was in the devil's backyard, all right, like old Peterson had said. I tried to crawl back to the beach, infantry style on my hands and knees. I left the lady luck once more. She couldn't desert me now, not now. Oh, the bullet got me right in the stomach. A rifle shot from somewhere. I couldn't fight back. The bullet got you. I heard you cry out, Regan. <laughs> Crawl, Regan. Crawl into the darkness. I kept crawling. Inch. Inch. It seemed hours. I, I passed a hat sitting on the edge of a lime pit. Just a hat. Whoever owned it had tumbled in. There must be some place to escape, some place to die. Oh, well. The landmine went off not 30 yards away. The whirling dust caked my clothes. Chips of flying rock kicked me in the face. Hinkley! Hinkley, hear me! Show yourself, I dare you! Meet me face to face! Just one. Give me an even chance! In the morning, I'll come for you, Regan. <laughs> Just one more hour. One more hour. Ah! Ah! Something had happened to Hinkley. Two shots and a scream, a death cry like McAvoy scream when the trap swung him into the tree that looked like a gallows. I looked up over the island. <laughs> there was an old man. Hinkley. He had to be Hinkley, hanging by a heel, face downward. It was Hinkley. <laughs> Caught in his own movie trap. Regan. Do you hear me, Regan? This is Burnside speaking. Hinkley just lost control of the situation while running for cover from gunfire. Stay exactly where you are. In one hour, it'll be morning. And I'll come for you. One hour. <laughs> Don't bother, Burnside. Don't bother coming. Crazy hermit, booby trap, the gallows, quicksand, the mausoleum, a blonde witch. Uh, an informant tells me that Dracula was scheduled to appear on page 25, but the author fell into a lime pit on page 24. 
Borrow? Does some jittery Joe want me to hack out a homely hint on how to keep from growing cold? <laughs> okay, friend. When bitten by the gold bug, don't yell Eureka. Be cautious. Play safe. Yell Sanctum came to you through the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. (laughs) 